Welcome to Terry's Kitchen, where we talk food, faith, and family. Today's another exciting day on location. We are at the Donna and Jim Rhodes Farm, and we, I've got Donna. Um, she went out, her and Jim went out and picked fresh blackberries, and they are beautiful, and they're about, some are about the size of your thumb, and um, so Donna is going to show me how she, and you all, how we make, or she makes, fruit cobbler. So, but before we do that, Donna is going to read our devotion today out of Jesus Calling. It says, let my love seep into the inner recesses of your being. Do not close off any part of yourself from me. I know you inside and out, so do not try to present a cleaned up self to me. Wounds that you have shut away from the light of my love will fester and become wormy. Secret sins that you hide from me can split off and develop lives of their own, controlling you within you without you even realizing it. Open yourself fully to my transforming presence. Let my brilliant love light search out and destroy hidden fears. This process requires time alone with me as my love soaks into your innermost being. Enjoy my perfect love, which expels every trace of fear. And that's based out of Psalm 139, verses 1 through 4, 23 through 24, and 1 John 4, 18. Thank you, Donna. And so true, you know, um, and just those quiet times that we have with the Lord, you know, and that's kind of how we got started on YouTube, is those quiet times and hearing the Lord speak. So I'm going to read uh, a meditation moment, and you've heard me say that our friend Debbie shared this, if you're feeling stressed or feeling blessed. We have a little bit of a, 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 a devotion meditation moment. Pray twice as much as you fear. Oh, so right true. Yes, it does. You know nothing happens by chance. Holy Spirit is here today with us as we're cooking in the kitchen. So, so let me just have a, a, a quick word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this time as we come and, and enjoy and fellowship and and cook here with Donna and on their lovely farm and, and fellowshipping with them. We thank you, Lord, that your presence is always with us and that we take those times to have those quiet moments with you. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for letting me do that. We're going to wash our hands and we're going to get started. And I'm looking out the window of their beautiful um, farm overlooking in the sunflowers. Um, Ron has taken the video, so we'll be able to see a little bit more of their lovely garden that they have worked so hard on and, and harvesting a lot of these wonderful fruits and vegetables. and what what do you call this recipe so this is a um, family tradition recipe from Page County and uh, when I was young um, so before we got married I was collecting recipes from my grandmother and from sister-in-laws and aunts and I put everything together back then in this little uh, basically index card. You can see how old it is. That's a good idea. And so basically these are recipes that I collected through the years from family and it's really from um, my great aunt Marie Ryman. But still today we coin it as the Page County One Cup Cobbler. And it is very quick, easy, um, throw it together on a summer day, last minute, um, and take it to many picnics. But we ha enjoy it with pretty much any kind of fruit. Our favorite is peach. But today we're going to do blackberry. Well, we're coming up on peach season, so that'll be good too. So, yeah. so basically you take a 13 by 9 pan, and I took a one-third cup of butter and melted it in the oven, and that's here ready for us to go. And then in a bowl, you're just going to put all your dry ingredients, which here we go is our one cup. So we have one cup of flour and one cup of sugar. 
everybody, um, I've noticed, and especially, you know, seeing recipes, uh, that everybody has a, a little different way that they make a cobbler. And, um, but, but basically, you can't go wrong, flour, sugar, um, and your berries and milk. So, yeah. And so this one, what makes this a little different is it's basically you just layer it in the pan, but the butter goes in first, so that way it kind of comes up around the edges oh. and makes the crisp, buttery crust. Oh, from so under, that's from underneath. The... Usually cobblers have the food on the bottom, the crust uh -huh. on top. This is flipped opposite. Okay. So, in, so far I have the cup of butter, uh, sorry, the cup of flour and the cup of sugar, <laughs> dry ingredients. I'm going to add three-fourths a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. So how often do you make these cobblers? Well, in the summertime, probably two or three times a month. Um, but in the winter, we will freeze our berries. And so it's a nice treat, actually, in the wintertime. Um, and then there's always the family debate. Um, so here we go, Terry. Uh, okay. Debate. So okay. with your cobbler, do you have vanilla ice cream with it or milk? Well, I can answer that, and it depends on the cobbler. So our family has um, something a little similar with their berry uh, cobbler. We always call it cherry pudding. And it's a cake-like and it's a dry cake. So when that is done, come out, comes out of the oven, we, we cut it in squares, put it in a bowl, sprinkle sugar on top, because there's not really a lot of sugar in the actual um, cherry pudding, and then we a, a teaspoon of sugar on top of that, put the milk over that, and then the milk absorbs the sugar, it's warm. However, if I'm doing a cobbler, which I'm thinking is the what you're kind of making, I want ice cream. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so what's going on here with the roses? Oh, well, we'll see. We have the Gokenauer oh, Bowman yes, yes. and then the Rhodes, yes, the all farm community debate. So really it's split, but okay. I would say, yeah, milk is definitely on the Bowman side and Rhodes is all about the ice cream. Of course, they had a dairy farm, so they're all about the vanilla ice cream. Oh, okay. But Grandma Rhodes does put milk on lots of things. So I'm just adding a cup of milk to my dry ingredients and you're just making the batter similar to a pancake batter. Oh, okay. So, so and you know we all have, uh, when we're cooking, we all have, you know, those memories and family recipes that we like to, to pass down. And so where do you think your Aunt Marie got her recipe? Sorry, I have no idea. Well, but <laughs> But do you think she's right. always done it? So right. did that come from her mom or grandmother? Right. And so some of these are really some old time recipes. And uh, that's what's so exciting about uh, these videos that we can share it with the younger generation so that they can be cooking too. So, so Donna, if you want me to do something, just let me know. Or I'm going to sit here, watch and talk. You're just going to sit and watch because all <laughs> you do, that's how easy this is. And literally, wow. I said I literally whip this up lots of times. If at last minute I know I'm having company or just for a treat for the family because I can mix this up, get the frozen berries out. I have put the frozen berries, especially blueberries, right on top frozen. Okay. Um, right on top. You do have to bake it a little longer depending on if you put the fresh fruit or the frozen fruit in. But literally let the butter stay around the edges to get that, that crisp crust. And then I'm just taking up already washed and drained my berries and it says one quart it really depends on what fruit you have I have um, I like a lot of fruit which means you do have to bake it a little longer but this is probably the equivalent of more like a quart and a half of blackberries because okay. I like it full because really it's all about the berries and just a little bit about the crust with the butter on the edge okay oh. and you know I, I, I know I mentioned how exciting this is coming to the, the Rhodes' family farm, and to, to be able, we were out, and again, it's gonna be part of our video today, just seeing them pick these berries. Um, these are less than an hour old. So. Exactly, and you know, from, from farm to table. So it, it's so exciting to see this, and what an easy recipe, and I will be trying this, Donna. So, so that's all it is to it. You put it in the oven and bake it. The recipe um, says for 45 to 50 minutes, Honestly, with this, with as many berries, it'll take 50, 55 minutes to bake. Okay. But put it in the oven. All right, so we'll be back. Oh, they get underneath here in this. Jeff, 
So, Donna and Jim, so you're getting your blackberries. We're going to make ourselves a blackberry pie oh, here wow. today. Absolutely. That's right. Fresh huh. cobbler. Fresh cobbler. All right. How exciting. So, another day on location making blackberry cobbler. I tell you, this is wonderful. If you like blackberries, <laughs> we do like blackberries. <laughs> Most importantly, we like blackberry cobbler. Yeah. So I think uh, Jim and Donna disappeared into the blackberry bushes. How many years have you had blackberry? This is the third year. Third year. Wow. So you've just got everything here in the garden here. Blueberries. Blueberries, strawberries. I've taken advantage of those strawberries. So potatoes and corn and peppers and all these wonderful things. And two homegrown twin bullets. Right? On the farm? Well, we have just had the best time in this kitchen. Let me just tell you. We have the blackberry cobbler. The fruit cobbler is out of the oven. I uh, wish you all were here because we, uh, Donna's going to dip us up a bowl. She's got her milk for those that like milk. She's got some vanilla ice cream for those that like vanilla ice cream. And we're just going to give a taste here. Right. It's going to be a little hot, but I think, it, I think we're going to manage it. There we go. So like I said, I put extra berries in it. So it did take the full 55 minutes. And you want to make sure that, you know, basically it's like a pancake mix. And it um, has set up. And, yep, Terry, if you want to. Oh my gosh, look at all this. Oh, that is more berry than uh, cobbler. That is wonderful. That's, yep. Great. There we go. I have thoroughly enjoyed that. We, off film, we were trying to think of, uh, we're going to do some more recipes because this was so much fun coming on location down here at the Rhodes' house, the Rhodes' farm. We'll be butchering a cow next week. So. <laughs> yes, because this is the Rhodes. You talk, I talk about uh, Jim Rhodes and the beef. So this is where I get uh, the beef that I cook with. Um, would not go through um, a year without getting two rounds of beef for our kids and us. And it, it's just wonderful. So not only the, the wonderful fruits and vegetables, but um, the beef that they raise on their farm as well. So... So I'm right, going to try so some, do you want... So say, one? what do you want, Terry? You want the I'm you want gonna milk go, or an ice cream? I'm just going to go with the plain cobbler for me, <laughs> and I'm going to sample that. Ron, yeah. we got to give our cameraman yeah. a taste just of the Just one cup. scoop of ice cream. All right, we got an ice cream. So I'll switch spots here with you. Maybe. Oh, my. Oh, that's, that's good. Good. Get you on camera, Mr. Ron. Yes, well. There we go. Taste test. And Donna, what are you going to have? Well, I'm going to do milk. That's a family tradition. It's the milk. Oh, my. Those berries. Delicious. The cobbler itself. And you refer, you talk about like a pancake batter. Like um, instead of having a crust mm -hmm. or even a crumb, like some people do cobblers with an oatmeal crumb mm -hmm. or an actual pie crust, this is literally like a pancake batter that just kind of surrounds the fruit. Mm -hmm. Just enough to hold it together. Oh, but so. just all those berries and the sweetness and the little bit of tartness is popping. So delicious. Another recipe. Definitely going to be trying. I think you need to definitely try it for your family. It is certainly easy, and get yourself some blackberries. It is blackberry season, and if not, if you have some in the freezer, you can use that to make the, the cobbler as well. We want to thank you. Well, I want to thank Donna and Jim and Brittany uh, for letting me come and join in today in their home, in their kitchen, and cooking. It, it was just wonderful and, and just wonderful fellowship. 
And so thank you. Thank you for viewing our video. If you like it, certainly share it and subscribe. We would appreciate it. Blessings.